Genius Biotherapeutics, also known as GBT, has been granted permission to obtain a primary listing on a foreign stock exchange, either the London Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. GBT is South Africa's leading biotechnology company at the forefront of novel technology treatment for cancer and infectious diseases. To tell us more of the significance of the listing, we are joined in studio by Dr. Iqbal Serva. He's the chairperson of Genius Biotherapeutics. Thank you so much for your time. Iqbal, this is obviously a big day in the life of GBT. Firstly, have you decided which exchange you are going to go for or are you looking at a dual listing here? The problem, thanks for having me on the show. Um, it is a big day because the Reserve Bank and Treasury has given us permission to list. Uh, we'll appoint an investment bank uh, most likely in mid-July uh, to direct us to which stock exchange, but uh, at this point in time, we're watching the European markets and, of course, uh, uh, the American markets to determine that. Well, what percentage um, do you own at present? Is this 100% owned? No, no. Second Jala Investments owns 49% of Genius Biotherapeutics. Uh, the remainder is owned by a combination of the scientists and also by an offshore private uh, investor uh, shareholders. Because, I, I, sorry, I no, think go, go what ahead. we're trying to establish is, I mean, if we look at Second Jala, its, it's market cap is maybe two, three hundred million rand, and yet you have uh, what appears to be from, from this uh, a very valuable investment, which certainly is not represented in the price of Second Jala. No, I think, David, you're absolutely right. Um, sorry, part of the problem is that... Uh, uh, in South Africa, there is no biotechnology analysts, there's no biotechnology fund managers, uh, and there isn't an understanding of the biotechnology valuation. As an example, our competitor okay. Dendrion uh, is listed on the NASDAQ, uh, has lost a billion dollars to date, about $200 million a year, and uh, its market cap has ranged between $2.5 billion to $7 billion. So, you know, with that kind of uh, performance, uh, in, if they were listed in South Africa, they probably would have a market cap of uh, minus something. So it's just that, you know, the industry, the, the fund industry in biotechnology isn't in South Africa. I think it's a huge funding constraint, and that's one of the reasons why Treasury has allowed us to do a primary what listing offshore, having analyzed, you know, the funding industry for biotechnology uh, in South Africa. Iqbal, so, I mean, listening to you what, do you, what would you like to raise? Obviously, you need the money for further development for R&D uh, in biotech, and you, you're 100% right. Not only do, do we not have a, uh, biotech, we don't have venture capital. So I can understand your desire to go across there, but what kind of funds you know, would you think about raising offshore? Well, to date, we've you know spent at least about 300 million in developing about 24 global patents, uh, including the very important patent in cancer therapeutics using dendritic cell vaccines, which is the body's own immune therapy for cancers. Uh, the next stage is to uh, uh, have the clinical trials in the U.S. and Europe. Uh, we know that our competitor Dendrion has in fact proven that it works uh, with the prostatic cancer drug called Provenge. We now want to do the same. Uh, we, you know, we will do uh, whatever it needs to be done in the U.S. And primarily, the funding would be to uh, do the clinical trials, and um, most likely we'll raise, raise uh, you know, between 25 and 30 million dollars, uh, you know, for 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 the uh, clinical trials. But it also depends. We may have to do limited clinical trials in Europe and more full-fledged clinical trials in the USA, mm -hmm. even though the technology has now been proven. I must tell you that this is the kind of um, very advanced uh, cancer therapeutics that was unheard of uh, approximately 10 years ago. It will change the way uh, uh, people treat cancer over the next uh, two decades. Uh, well, both here. Uh, with regards to something like, for instance, your company, you have obviously a great deal of, you know, side benefits for the gut for externalities uh, for the country as a whole uh, do you plan even though you're listing internationally to maintain a south african base and secondly what do you think government can do to actually advance you know uh, ventures such as this you know which are very high payoff but also very high risk 
I, I think it's a great question. Firstly, um, you know, we, we, we are retaining all the IP in South Africa. Um, that's a condition of the Reserve Bank listing. Uh, secondly, uh, we're making sure that these products, these cancer therapeutics, as we currently do, by the way, we're the only South African and African company to own uh, biosimilar plants uh, in South Africa. We, we make sure that those uh, products are, in fact, available at highly affordable prices for the South African community. Uh, the government has partnered us. Uh, the Technology Innovation Agency is one of the key partners in the 120 million rand facility that we've built in Cape Town in Goodwood, which we will launch with the Minister of Science and Technology on the 24th of April. So by and large, uh, government has a very important role to play. Our key responsibility, you know, we're a pioneer in this area of biotechnology in South Africa. Uh, our key responsibility is to create a, a platform to, uh, to, for our scientists to work in, for, to grow our talent. But more importantly, I think this success and the listing will accelerate the understanding of the, of the kind of talent, the university base, the technologies that we have in South Africa on a global level. And, and we're very excited by that. But you're quite correct, you know, this kind of development requires a huge partnership. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I must say that at the last AGM of Second Jolla, for instance, a lot of the shareholders felt, you know, we should use our surplus capital for dividends, for dividends instead of, you know, investing it into uh, areas of technology, which includes aquaculture, biotechnology, um, as well as in the IT technologies that we've invested in to date. But we've always taken a view that it's important to have a 10-year view of uh, our economy and our business and biotechnology, I think, is going to prove us right in, 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 in the long run. Iqbal, are these South African scientists developing South African technology? Is it uh, with a, you know, all, all locally developed scientists? The ma majority of our key scientists are South African, but we've partnered with uh, the University of Cardiff in Wales. We've partnered with uh, Pretoria University and University of Cape Town, and that has been our model. But yes, the key, the key scientists driving our technologies is South Africa. Yeah. What is which it I think tells you a lot about mm -hmm. the expertise that we have available on the, uh, in the South African uh, and on the African continent. What is it going to take to elevate biotechnology as a sector within the South African fund management space? I think it's important, uh, well firstly you need successes, that's, that's critical. Once you have a success like this one, you're going to find that uh, uh, it will serve to, to, to have a greater insight. It's a bit like the dot-com situation where uh, once you understand the importance of IT companies, uh, you start investing in them. And I think we will probably serve as the accelerator for a greater interest. And hopefully, fund managers, uh, institutions will start having biotechnology analysts. You know, when we did our roadshow, in London and New York about two years ago, we met about 10 uh, of the investment bankers at a time from each, from each investment bank, and each of them had at least three biotechnology analysts that were PhDs, uh, MDs with MBAs sitting in on the meeting. So it's that kind of uh, capacity that you need to, to build, and, and, I, and I do hope that the, the fund managers in South Africa uh, will consider um, doing that because we've got such great talent in this country and uh, it would be a real tragedy if that talent goes to waste because we're not funding it. Iqbal, thank you so much for your time. That was Dr. Iqbal Surve. He's the chairperson of Genius Biotherapeutics joining us from our Cape Town studio.